Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my experience. Uh, I am Dr. Mona Pradhan, currently working as a field medical officer stationed in Lumini province in Nepal. Uh, so I've been uh, working for the WHO for past two years, and I basically look after the um, health emergencies uh, program in uh, in the province. So um, to begin with my uh, cholera outbreak experience, focusing on the community engagement, uh, I would like to share my experience which occurred uh, last year. So uh, on 4th of October 2021, uh, Shivraj Hospital, which is a local 15-bedded hospital in Kapilvastu district, um, had actually reported uh, nine cases of acute, uh, diarrheal, uh, acute diarrhea, which had overnight become 100 plus cases uh, with two deaths reported in the community. So as a immediate response, a provincial team along with the WHO team was deployed to the site for a preliminary investigation. Now, considering the community where this outbreak had occurred, as well as this large number of cases overnight, uh, security personnel were deployed uh, in the community. This, was, this decision was taken by the district health office chief and uh, the security personnel helped in um, uh, miking in the community to aware people about uh, uh, this acute watery diarrhea, as well as urge people to drink boiled water and maintain personal hygiene and sanitation. Similarly, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, two deaths were also reported in the community. These deaths had occurred because one had not, uh, had not gone to a uh, hospital to receive any services and the other one had, was taken to a pharmacy rather than to a health, um, health, uh, health facility. So in that case, two deaths had report, uh, reported. So in such circumstances, health workers were also deployed uh, in the main affected area to identify cases with severe dehydration and distribute uh, ORS in the community. Now, uh, the following day, the cases had more than doubled. So um, a meeting uh, with the investigation team, the district health office and the rapid response team, they decided to now mobilize the female community health volunteers as well as the external development partners who are already working in the district health office and the, some uh, volunteers from the local NGOs. Uh, they were decided to mobilize in the community. Uh, meanwhile, we had prepared some uh, questionnaires. Uh, this EDPs, uh, external development partners and the local NGOs, uh, they had to do, do some door-to-door -door survey, household survey, and collected some um, data related to uh, uh, how many uh, members do, do they have? Uh, did they develop any kind of symptoms? Uh, did they seek any medical services, health services, or did they stay at home? So similar kind of information were gathered. And on the other hand, uh, these female community health volunteers were mobilized to uh, spread awareness uh, about the cholera and its prevention, how to, what is the importance of hand washing, uh, how to do hand washing techniques, then uh, water boiling techniques, the importance of use of toilets. So all these were simultaneously parallelly running. Now, uh, some of the challenges that we faced or during this community engagement was a language barrier because this committee spoke a different language. The external development partners and the volunteers had difficult time uh, collecting the information. Uh, similarly, the, another challenge that we faced was a myth among the people that it was better to go to a uh, pharmacy rather than to go to a local hospital and receive medical treatment. The other was, um, this community practiced a very widely practiced open defecation uh, and they strongly strongly despise the, the use of toilet. So uh, how to overcome that challenge? Uh, we discussed and we then approached the local leaders and we had uh, an orientation in each of the municipalities that uh, reported the cases as well as uh, the neighboring municipalities. We had an orientation with the mayor, with the ward chief, and uh, with the health coordinators, with the health workers stationed there. 
and oriented them about cholera and its uh, preventive measures, the importance of use of toilet, the importance of um, drinking boiled water, maintaining personal hygiene and sanitation. And in this way, we approached a wide public, uh, including uh, the female community health, uh, uh, female community health volunteers, the local leaders, and um, uh, the external development partners. So uh, the positive aspect of community engagement was uh, people had started to uh, at least not drink boiled water, but at least started using methods of water uh, purification that was fluorine tablets before drinking water. And then um, they had started using uh, practices using the toilets and so on. So uh, in this regard, we saw that community engagement was a very, very important tool in breaking the cholera transmission chain. Um, transmission chain. So that is all from my side. Over to you. Thanks, Mona. So actually, what we try to capture from your experience, I, I feel it in that way, at least two things. One is uh, the emergency uh, management, maybe it is cholera, maybe it is other, maybe flood or any other disaster, and the role of community, one thing. Second thing is uh, you refer to sanitation and also behavior change practice and uh, also uh, adopting the new, newer strategy. So uh, the healthy lifestyle and uh, all those things actually relates uh, to my experience on the CLTS, community-led total sanitation. That actually uh, happened in many countries and also that changed the uh, practice of uh, sanitation, practice of behavior and hand hygiene. So I think uh, uh, we will go a little deeper on that if possible. And I'm sure there are some uh, uh, virtual participants, uh, colleagues, friends uh, listening to this. and. Please put your comments, question in the chat box so that we can uh, further clarify or further get to know from uh, Dr. Mona and other panelists. And also we have here learned participants, so we are hoping to have your reflection. So at this moment, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dobi. Uh, may, you may just uh, focus on like from your experience in Zimbabwe and also other health programs, like how community engagement is important and also from your experience, if you cite two, three example, so that will be actually helpful for us for discussion. So over to Dr. Dobi. Thank you very much, moderator, and good afternoon, all participants, physical and those who are online. Uh, my experience on community engagement was our cholera outbreak in 2008 to nine. This was uh, due to infection of members of the community in an urban setting. So one person had died, but this community is the culture of cleaning the dead body before they buried. And this cleaning is done by putting water through the gastrointestinal system. And they start cleaning because they believe that for someone to go to heaven, they should be clean without this. And we all know where our cholera comes from. So what we need to do is to communicate the risk to that community, what risk is entailed in doing that practice? And us as scientists, we know, but is it acceptable to them? Are we going to prescribe to them what they are supposed to do? Or are we to engage them and say, this is the risk. How do we mitigate the risk? And then they can tell us. So after engaging with them, and after they understood the risk, then they asked us, what is it that which we must do so that we don't get infected or infect other members of the community? But the issue here is they are not going to stop their practice. That is the community. That is who they are. So after we educated them 
that you can go ahead with the cleaning, but you should have protective clothing and you should sanitize before you meet other members. That was then acceptable. And since that time, they are continuing in their practice, but there are no more cases from that practice. So we engaged, we involved them in decision-making and now it is working. So it is not right for us to prescribe. We should engage and have ownership from different communities and different cultures on how we should mitigate our problems. This is the experience which I had. But however, on the issue of community engagement, as we know, we have got different communities. The most important thing which I have learned is that of ownership of each and every program. Are we passing parcels of the program? Are we contributing uh, effectively? Are we being recognized for implementing this program? So in our planning, we should involve them, have the ideas, and mainly look at the influential members of the society, the chiefs, the leaders, the religious leaders, uh, the traditional healers in the rural settings. So these people, when they communicate the risk to the rest of the community, since we are dealing with the public health problem, for example, cholera, they will then understand it better than when it is coming from us health practitioners. But one other thing which I noted in my own experience, which is not medical, but which has got community inside. I have a small farm where I rear cattle and goats. So there, are, there is my manager there and there are other people there. So when I was going there, they would say, these animals belong, belong to the boss. And from that statement that it was my property, not theirs, I then found some challenges. I had to go there often to see what is happening. But one day I just decided that we should own this project together. So I gave to them one beast each. I take care of the vaccinations, I take care of the dipping, I take care of all the other things that are required, but they have their own. So from that time on, their language changed to our cattle. So there was a sense of ownership. And now I can spend even six months without going there and there's no problem. So there is ownership in that. So let's engage the community. Let them have ownership in our program. Once they do have the ownership in our programs, then the risks can be communicated easily and then we can achieve what we want to achieve. We can go and drill a ball in the community. The ball needs maintenance. The ball is parts which can be used to source money by other people. But if the community owns that problem, they know who passed it through, who is where, if something goes missing and it is their ball, you'll always find it there. But if it is our ball, especially if it has been done by the partner NGOs, it belongs to the NGOs, they can vandalize it and the community loses. But if we rope in the community, this is your ball. This is your responsibility to take care of it and maintain it. We are done. It's no longer ours. We are not going to see it. You will see that ball is going to be functional or that system, because cholera has to do with wash. And many a time, it is the vandalism that happens because it doesn't belong to them. So community ownership is very important. I thank you. the emergency management, how they manage the cholera outbreak crisis. And now for a longer term solution, how uh, Dr. Dobi explained very well, the ownership, the people's participation, the people's engagement, how it is important. And also we have that experience from water aid working in uh, sanitation. 
when we go to urban slums, when we go to very remote rural area, we try to help them uh, building the toilets. But when we come, it is not really well maintained. The important issue is involving the community and engaging them in the maintenance process. So the words that Dr. Dobi used, feeling them, this is ours. So when they really feel it, then they really can help in the program implement and also we can get the success. So I think this is the main takeaway from his uh, interesting and excellent uh, example uh, that ours program, ours initiative and ours uh, duty and role. I think you can remember the 1978 Almata declaration where it was clearly mentioned the rights and duty of people. So that refers really to the community engagement. So uh, I now like to request uh, Jose Paulo from Zim uh, Mozambique uh, and request him uh, to share his insights and experience on community man uh, management and community engagement in the uh, implementation process. And also if he can refer some uh, cholera or other health programs, that will be great for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? This is uh, this is like in Zoom. It, it yeah, uh, it's like taking a moment to you know to flee from the nervous system and then start. So, uh, in terms of community engagement or e involvement, I think there are two things different and. Uh, the concept uh, really di different for them. So we have a saying, I don't know if I will say it well in English, but uh, we have a saying in Mozambique that in the breakfast where you eat egg and bacon, the pig, it's involved and the chicken, it's engaged. So there's a, there's, there's a need to, to really, when you go and implement community engagement, you must be sure if you want to engage or to involve a community. And uh, depending on what you decide, the strategy is different, you know, uh, starting from defining what is community. Normally we define that community, it's a rural area with poor people, but we have a community, invisible community that affects that visible community more than we think like we normally refer to the leaders, politicians as leaders and politicians, but we don't refer to them as a community. And this is a big community that needs to be involved and engaged. And some programs like building latrines, you should involve those politicians to understand why they're building, where they're building and for whom they're building. This is the first community we tend to forget. And then we engage the community that will who need a uh, latrine or other interventions. And when we design those interventions there, they don't involve at all communities uh, that we can see that we inaugurate a latrine, for instance. We build a latrine and we go for inauguration. There's thousands of people, they're inaugurating latrine. So the people of that community are seeing all those people inaugurating a latrine. Do you think they will use that latrine that everyone is there to control. I mean, when I have to do something, I have to go to that place where everyone knows and might appear. So I will still, I will keep having open defecation. So these are kind of programs that we engage community, but we don't involve them. Like where you want us to build a latrine? How do you want us to build a latrine? If we go to them, they will tell us that when you finish, you just leave the latrine there and go away. Don't inaugurate. Don't bring people to see where we go to defecate. Just leave the latrine. So this is kind of things that are that we learn with time doing uh, the NCP and planning how to do our capacity assessment. So we did like a pilot of capacity assessment and we start understanding those terms of what is the community? Which capacity are we assessing? We are assessing the capacity of donors. When we go to the NGOs, as my colleague said, we, I mean, you can go to a province or district that will have like four partners working in WASH, but the four of them are working on education. No one is working on, on infrastructure. 
and you say that 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 district they do have uh, uh, wash partners, but if you ask uh, the community uh, if they have wash support, they will say no. We uh, we 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 have no water. We have no access to water. Oh, someone builds a, a, a pump that it's hundred kilometer from the real need. The pump is closer to the river. That's good, but it's far from the population. So they they still they can use the pump and the river, and they keep having the same problem. So these are things that we 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 stopped and we said we have to adapt our capacity assessment to first see understand from the the partners what they think there is the capacity, and then understand from the community and all levels of community, starting with the leaders, what they understand is the capacity, you know. So, or, or and this is a. Uh, this is what we are doing with NCP, and we started with hotspot mapping. And on, on hotspot mapping, someone said very wisely on this meeting that uh, where we have cholera, we have other problems too. So when we find uh, this place where we have cholera, we should find if there is a community there. Because sometimes we will find the hotspot is where there is hospitals and not where there is communities. So where is this community coming from? Or where this color on that hospital is coming? There's a community around that it's bringing those cases. So we're starting uh, thinking on, on that and trying to build, find a hotspot and then try to go behind the hotspot and see if there's this hotspot means a community and which kind of community we, we are talking about, which kind of message this community needs. So if it's our urban community, we cannot use the same message uh, uh, as the rural one. And if it's a, a educated community, we cannot use the, 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 the same message. So, uh, and I will end with this. So we see programs like malaria programs that distribute bad nets. Because communities are engaged and not involved, the distribution of bad nets are very successful but they end up fishing with the bed nets if you, or if you distribute them to the fishermen population. Because these, whenever they come with the, 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 the nets, although the message is to prevent you to get malaria, what is heard is I'm bringing you solution for your fishing. So they use the, 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 the nets to fish. So if you engage them, they will say, if you bring me an antimalaric and any other thing, or if you give me a, a, a net that I can fish and this other net, I will, I will, I will, I will use. We had this, this experience, I think Kate was there in Sofala when we were doing the OCV campaign. We had a massive fight, massive fight because of the nets within the, 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 the vaccination post. So a uh, uh, soldier from Angola, they had to intervene. That was, the, this is how big was the fight. There were gunshots and everything for the nets, but they were not there for the nets to prevent malaria. They are there for the nets to fish because it was raining and it was flooding and fish <laughs> was on the top so they could easily fish and they were bringing the, the nets so they could use. So it's important to, involve uh, the community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose Paulo. I think you brought at least three important uh, in, uh, indicators to monitor and to include. One is the language, the way we talk and the way they understand. It is very important. Unless we are in the same page, the program will not work. Second thing is the people. Like when we talk about we are working for the people, but actually who are those people? who are the real beneficiary? Are we considering the real poor? Because poverty has a very great linkage with cholera and other uh, important disease. So uh, are we really considering the hard to reach people? So all these things uh, really come up and also very interesting point of involvement and engagement. So this is a very new uh, insight and new perception. So we can include that in our uh, further discussion and uh, requesting you all, the virtual participants, colleagues and friends, 
please uh, mention your questions or any comments if you want to uh, share with the group and also uh, get ready my uh, colleagues here in person present here. So uh, may, maybe I think I can ask Mona because uh, Nepal is a country like uh, population having in mountains, population having in the uh, plain land and also in the terrain in between. So you must have some experience and may have the insights of people living in the, uh, different area. And if you have implemented some programs in different area, how, how you learn to involve people in different uh, scenario and the different challenges. So maybe you can uh, talk about the factors that really is important to consider during the implementation of program and involvement of the people in different uh, uh, spatial or geographical context. Over to Mona. Uh, thank you, moderator. So, uh, regarding your question, uh, yes, uh, Nepal is uh, divided into mountainous, hilly, and uh, Tarai region. So, uh, let's talk about a program that is Female Community Health Volunteer Program, uh, which was introduced uh, in Nepal about three decades ago. And uh, this system, uh, this group- Please, uh, please uh, speak a little louder. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Better? Okay, thank you. Uh, so this uh, female community health volunteers were, uh, this program was introduced by the Nepal government about three decades ago. And uh, the primary objective of this int uh, of introducing this uh, program was to deliver basic health services uh, to the community to the grassroots level. Now there are various factors that, uh, although there are health posts, health hospitals, uh, but there are several reason re reasons uh, due to which public cannot access this um, services. For example. Uh, during the COVID vaccination time, uh, inter uh, introduction of the COVID vaccination, a lot of uh, people in the remote areas in the hilly region, they were left out. One, because they were not aware about it, although despite of uh, several uh, jingles and several uh, media briefing, uh, they were still left out and still unaware because they do not have access to these uh, amenities or TV or radios or any, any such kind of facilities. So these uh, female community health volunteers also played a part in uh, carrying the vaccine, whole, whole chain box or the vaccines to these area, to their home, home and provide vaccines. Uh, on the other hand, in the hilly regions, uh, uh, there was one photo that was very popular uh, where one uh, female community health volunteer, uh, volunteer had carried an uh, old woman from her home to this uh, health post where the vaccine was being given. Now, uh, in Tarai region, uh, as I had mentioned, uh, they speak different language. So language was a main barrier in communicating uh, with the uh, uh, communicating about awareness about cholera and preventive measures. So uh, what we did was uh, this female community health volunteers are local women. They're recruited from the local government. And uh, so they can speak the local language and communicate as well as that's a trust factor uh, between the public and uh, uh, the female community health volunteers. They act as a bridge between the community and the health services and the health facilities. So. Uh, uh, they were the uh, they were the main tool to deliver this uh, health service or awareness or advocate about cholera and its prevention in the Tarai region. Uh, thank you. Over to you. Uh, thanks, Mona. I think um, uh, Jose Paolo, if you have any comments on that, like what are the main actors or uh, uh, indicators that really to consider. Uh, like this in people engagement and also Dr. Uh, uh, Dobi also, if you have anything to add on that. Yeah, thank you. So uh, there's, I mean, she, she already mentioned about actors, community uh, health workers or other community agents that work with the communities, but uh, some, some institutions or organizations that work in a different way that already 
has trust from the communities are also important. Like I will mention here, I don't know uh, if you know, but I think it's an international organization, Caritas or Remar. They 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 work with the communities, doing other stuff with the community, teaching them how to seed, how to plant, how to create poultry and other stuff. And when you work with them, we have tried to work with them to do an assessment recently and it, it worked well. So uh, for instance, we have this project ECOM in Mozambique to decide the place where we would uh, make the Sentinel sites. We went to the communities to hear from them and to, to, to shape our research question with them. And the indication came from this uh, uh, organization that say, that they say that they can tell you, you know, this is the hospital where you see cholera, but the community where do they have cholera? It's like 200 meters, uh, 200 kilometers from here. They can die on the, I think I shared this with, with Kate when we were uh, doing this. So these organizations that they work with community, not in health uh, necessarily, but with day-to-day uh, -day needs of the community, like schooling, teaching, and do normal things. They are very key actors to consider as uh, uh, community actors when you consider the rural and the poor as your community. Anything? Okay, thank you. Um, just to add on to what you said, we should know how many people in the community where we want to implement our programs are involved or engaged in what we are doing. And then we should be able to monitor and evaluate. We were together in the planning uh, process. Are we together in the implementation process? How many are we? Our biggest challenge is most of these communities we are engaging, uh, we are engaging, engaging them on voluntary basis. And as we all know, there's nothing for free on this. Earth. Someone, somewhere is paying for it. Time is money, as the British say. So the time they are putting in the involvement or in our engagement with them, we should compensate it in one way or other. So that is one area which we are lacking. It's mainly on voluntary basis. Let's try to keep them within the program and compensate, compensate them somehow. That will be an indicator where we will see we are together from the beginning. We are together to the end. We are together for sustainability because most of our programs are not sustainable. The important thing is for the programs to be sustainable. And one other thing is our communities know exactly where our problem is. We don't have to reinvent, do research, analyze, assessment. They know exactly where is the problem or who is the problem. So if we engage them properly, it will be easy for us to solve our problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we get the insights of like importance of this. Now we may open or get some questions if there is from a virtual friends. Yes, there are two questions on the chat. Uh, first of all, wonderful presentations of one of the comments. What role has research played in your community centered engagement for cholera control? That's the first question. And a second one, do we have engagement of local social anthropologists in our community related work? Thank you. So to whom to the question, to all? I, okay. think, I think to all, yes. So uh, if you want to say something, Mona, on this. The role of social anthropologists or the uh, support from them um, or research. I would like to say that during my experience, uh, we had no such experts in the field. Uh, however, it was a teamwork uh, rather than uh, rather than um, a support from the expert. So uh, we basically had a coordination unit uh, in the uh, field uh, that included the provincial and the um, uh, local level government. So we do not had, uh, have any such kind of engagement of social uh, anthropologists. Yeah, I think when mm -hmm. you refer some uh, emergency like situation, it may not happen. But actually, in most of the times when we actually develop the program and try to implement, we usually get to know from the social scientists, the anthropologists, and also the social researchers 
during the assessment process, during the understanding of the implicability of the project. So it may differ, but um, most often we usually get uh, that kind of insights as well. Anything to add from uh, Jose or Dr. Gobi? Uh, thank you for that. As Mona said, the social anthropologist was not involved. This is the mistake which we make when we leave these people out. And also if we see, for example, in Africa, if we see, we go to our province in now, all the answers are that the research has been done, but we are not uh, maximizing on that. And leaving out the social anthropologists who are, uh, got degrees or who don't have any degree, but are learned, the community knows who is good at this. This is what I was saying. The answers are there in the community. Let's engage them meaningfully, and they will contribute to our research. We are leaving them out. I would say, for example, in Zim, we are educated, but we are not learned. We can't apply what we learn. We've got a literacy, literacy rate of above 99%. And then yet we are failing to control cholera because we are not taking into cognizance of the social anthropologist. This is a social thing, which education can then just push in and then it's like a penalty, Correct. but we are leaving out these people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, for Mozambique, I mean, uh, I am from National Institute of Health and uh, we like it to be at the National Institute of Health and be leading the cholera response many times and many initiatives such as vaccination and other intervention, including the NCP now. And we do have in our team, social scientists, anthropologists, and we are we also uh, started as a, a research institution to become a public health institution. So we normally involve all those uh, experts, uh, not only anthropologists, geographers, uh, history experts that can they go? I, I think our first vaccination uh, campaign, the 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 front team was anthropologists that they went with some of some of the people that used to be in this meeting also. So they 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 they, they and from that on we try to keep as much out to write the message considering the the community that we want to, to, to implement. I think it died was uh, uh, as a, an example of that. So it was easy to implement because we had a team that went up front and, and did the homework to see where we could implement and be successful. So uh, uh, at National, in Mozambique, we use that resource from National Institute of Health and it's been working yeah. well. Thank you.